This will age very poorly. As following the Toronto Raptors Summer League, Masai Ujiri and the Toronto Raptors front office are catching some heat regarding their draft selections this year. And yes, the Summer League team certainly disappointed, and we didn't have any crazy world-beating performances from a lot of our rookies, but from what I saw during the small stretch, the five games of Summer League that we got to witness, and just the development of this group, this take, this criticism, this disrespect that's getting thrown the way of this Toronto Raptors rookie draft class will age very poorly, and we'll break down that as to why in this video. But before we do, folks, again, we have a very exciting announcement. The Olympics just around the corner. This video is brought to you by Rentals.ca, who are proudly part with Team Canada Basketball. And while they've been supporting our national team overseas defend their home court, they've been helping thousands of Canadians find their home court on home soil. No matter where you are, Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, Calgary, Halifax, Mississauga, Edmonton, Victoria, St. John's, coast to coast, Rentals.ca helps you guys find the perfect place to live at a perfect price point. Their website's clean, it's extremely easy to use, and you can pinpoint exactly on the map where you're looking to find your next rental property where you're looking to move next so shout to rentals.ca for supporting team canada you know as we enter in this olympics for supporting the channel a ton of times sponsoring this content and most importantly helping you guys find your home court as uh, you find your next apartment so shout out to rentals.ca you can check out their website in the pinned comment of this video or in the description down below so make sure to check them out and you know as they uh team canada starts off their olympic run definitely check out rentals.ca as they're uh, supporting the team but let's dive into it because we have some disrespect going on for Canada's team and uh, in terms of the players that are happening right now. So basically news came out or Bleach Report did an article, did a deep dive in terms of, you know, giving the Toronto Raptors a rating, giving uh, the rookie class that we have a rating. And then you can see it's a D plus. And they essentially had this to say about the Toronto Raptors group. Essentially, the Toronto Raptors have a handful of 2024 draftees in action, including Jonathan Mogbo, including Jamal Shedd, as well as Older Chomche with the, that were 31st, 45th, and 57th overall, respectively, all of whom are averaging less than six points per game. And uh, essentially, though, uh, he and then for their first round pick, Jacoby Walter, though he's averaging double figures, is shooting just 32% from the field and is struggling to provide any ancillary con contributions. With the Raptors pivoting to a rebuild around Scotty Barnes, it could have used somebody popping as a three point shooter in Vegas, and no one in this rookie class ended up doing that for them. And Frankly, like, I'm not going to come out here and try to argue, try to defend that the Toronto Raptors rookie class was some phenomenal showing from our rookies, you know, world beaters that are just getting disrespected and overlooked any stretch of the imagination. It was an underwhelming summer league for a lot of Toronto Raptors fans, but to rank the rookie class, at least, you know, in terms of uh, the selections of players as a D plus and a lot of criticism that's just generally getting thrown the way of this rookie class, I think is getting overblown and taken out of proportion, basically specifically because of the nature of the players that the Toronto Raptors ended up selecting. And we can run through them all. And I think a few of these stats are taken out of context. And from what I've seen, I'm going to dive into the stats that I saw. I think Bleach Report misread some of the stats that were actually happening. So let's do it by a one by one basis because Jamal Shedd is the guy that I pick you know everyone I throw steel out and you know people come in and y'all roast me Jamal Shedd was the only rookie I came out and declared as a steal the other guys I think were solid selections but in terms of where this guy was projected his winning attitude and the the steps he needs to take to become an elite guard the fact that we got him at 45 is the player I anointed as the Raptors Digest steal in this year's rookie class and yes he's 22 years old a little bit older yes he's only six foot but he won national defensive player of the year and frankly in summer league I got what I expected out of Jamal Shedd because basically in terms of stats in terms of what he was able to provide Jamal Shedd averaged 8.2 points per game you know shot 27 percent from the three-point line so not very effective you know in terms of three-point shooting but 3.4 rebounds 3.8 assists 1.2 steals from the eye test really dominated was a hound on the basketball so Jamal Shedd yes he didn't magically become an absolutely elite knockdown three-point shooter by the time the NBA draft happened to the start of summer league but he did all of the other things that Raptors fans were hoping he was a nice leader for this team you know brain brought a steady presence played some elite defense was able to facilitate in just 20 minutes a night able to average eight three and three is very very solid nothing again world beating but definitely a solid performance at that point guard spot so why is he getting a ton of criticism well 
the third 27 percent as a six foot guard is uh, from behind the three-point line is not great it's not something that is going to be sustainable for him to really burst out into the scene be declared that steal for the toronto raptors but i've kind of maintained this he needs to develop that jump shot that jump shot he needs to be locked in a gym and just become Rather than a 30% three-point shooter, which he was in college, you know, became 28 in summer league, that has to turn to at least a 35% three-point shooter. Because, frankly, everything he else he does as a small guard in the NBA is exactly what you're looking for. So, do I expect him to have an impact right away in his rookie season for this Toronto Raptors team? No. The same way Kyle Lowry didn't have much of an impact, you know, during his rookie season with the Memphis Grizzlies. But I think Kyle Lowry would have had more impact than Jamal Shedwell this season. But, you know, that's it. Fred Van Vliet, more apt to the Toronto Raptors. He barely played during his rookie season for the Toronto Raptors. I think that's going to be a similar story for Jamal Shedd. But if he just grinds, works on that three-point shot, literally everything else is going to, to lead him to be a capable, strong, steady NBA player. So that three-point shot comes into play. I'm very happy with Jamal Shedd. And I'm happy that... All the other skills we knew about him were a positive. So that's my take on Jamal Shedd. That hasn't really changed. I haven't really become distaste with uh, what Jamal Shedd was able to provide after watching five games of Summer League. The next guy that I think all Raptors fans are actually really excited about, and I think it's disingenuous to talk about you know, him as a disappointment because he averaged under five points per game, is Ulrich Chomche, who, uh, Ulrich Chomche, who is a guy that is listed at 6'10 here. He's a seven-footer, according to different reports and stuff, only 18 years old. We knew this man was going to be raw. We wanted to watch this guy, see what he could do you know, out there on the basketball court. And he came off the bench in a lot of games for this Raptors team, only averaged, what, under five points per night, you know, a few rebounds there, 1.4, well, 1.4 blocks in 19 minutes per game, had that monstrous five block game when he had ended up starting in one of those actions. So Ulrich Shamche is a guy that I think deserves a lot of credit in terms of the speed that he was able to show. I won't talk about him too much because I made a couple of whole videos about just his speed, the mobility, what we're seeing as an 18 year old. Yes, he is raw. Is he going to have an impact right away? No. That's just not the reality of, uh, shouldn't be the expectation for an 18 year old that's, you know, still developing the game. But frankly, I was really impressed with his basketball like instincts. You know, a lot of the guys, you know, Baby you Nogueira know, is the big one that I think teased a lot of Toronto Raptors fans with nice intangibles, a jump shot, all that type of stuff. But he used to get lost out there on the defensive end. What I saw from Ola Chomche is a guy that had good, just, I don't want to say Jakobertel instincts, but Jakobertel is an elite defender because he's really good at positioning. He doesn't have like a 50 inch vert and crazy wingspan and stuff, you know, block a ton of shots, but Ola Chomche has that. And then I thought looked solid in terms of just being able to not look lost, you know, out there on the defensive end. So I was very happy with Ola Chomche. I don't think a, a D plus in terms of those top two guys is really is really out there for this team and then we have our next guy who i think taken out of con like again you can just trash on this team or whatever but jonathan mobo right like came in he was one of the guys that i think most raptors fans were excited to see what we have in mobo and did it had a disappointing first game but looked more comfortable at the start of his second game you know 6-6 six, six, 31st overall selection but you can see it in the stats the numbers Mobo played two games, averaged 13 minutes in Bo because he was injured essentially in the second one, right? So his stats don't even really matter for Mobo here at this point. He got injured in his second game. It's basically zero sample size. We looked dominant in the game that he did play alongside Grady Dick. So again, I'm not going to sink my teeth, get too stressed about that one there. But the final guy that we do have to talk about, and again, talking about his stats and stuff, is Jacoby Walter. Because he's the guy that, again, is our 19th overall pick. The guy who was a send one of the big pieces coming back in this Pascal Siakam trade. And uh, again, 6'4", he's listed 6'6", 19 years old, so still pretty young, right? We wanted to see, we knew this guy can shoot the basketball coming to the league. And was a bit disappointing in regards to his three-point shooting, especially early on in Summer League. But frankly, as the Summer League went on, you know, he got more reps under his belt, looked a bit nervous in his first couple of outings, right? He, he ended up shooting a higher percentage, ended up knocking down more shots, scoring around the basket. And from the eye test, his straight line drives looked very, very solid. Didn't do too much in terms of facilitating or anything like that, but he's expected to be one of those 3 and D kind of scores. And defensively from Jacoby Walter, Again, he got Kaboom guy a couple times, but I was really impressed with the just intensity that he played out there on the basketball court with. Looked motivated, win, loss, you know, when the team was winning or losing, I thought Jacoby Walter played very, very solid. So 
to come out here and just rank this rookie class, you know, the Toronto Raptors selected as a D plus, especially where we have a lot of guys that are developing, who were hurt, you know, clearly have things that they're building towards in terms of this game to just immediately rank it as a D plus. A lot of the hate, the criticism that's getting thrown this way. I think it's a little bit too early, very unwarranted and stuff. So that's just my take. Again, they're ranking off summer league. So maybe it makes sense to, to bash on when players didn't perform that well in summer league, but I wanted to come out here, defend my guys, defend this group, but let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. You know, Ochai Abaji, I think, is the guy that uh, we should be most disappointed in from the Summer League performance, just given he's a fourth-year player and stuff, but that's just kind of how it goes. You guys are best to make this far. Subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. I'm signing out. Cheers.